It is Friday afternoon on the 16th of March. We are now less than 24 hours away from witnessing severe cyclone Lua cross the Pilbara coast. Since the landfall is coming up rather soon, this update is going to be rather brief. The latest forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology is still suggesting that the greatest chance of a landfall is near Padue at 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, and the storm is forecast to make landfall as a Category 4. As of right now, it is already a severe Category 3 on the Australian scale. This forecast matches up nicely with the forecast from the JTWC. They are still expecting the storm, or at least the center of the storm, to track just east of Port Hedland. As has been forecast for the past several days, the mid-level steering ridge that was forcing the cyclone northward is beginning to retrograde more toward the northwest, out ahead of this approaching and very strong mid to upper level trough over the southern Indian Ocean. Out ahead of this trough we have northwest winds in the mid to upper levels and this is going to help shunt our cyclone more toward the Pilbara coast. You can also see the evolution of this occurring on the latest Indian Ocean satellite water vapor imagery. The mid-level ridge is continuing to move more toward the northwest and within the last few frames you see a significant increase in troughing just to the west of Western Australia. Unfortunately, we don't have any recent microwave satellite imagery, but the most recent SSMIS pass from roughly seven hours ago was already beginning to indicate the presence of a developing eye feature at the time. Since then, a more ragged eye-like feature has also begun to appear on the latest visible and standard infrared imagery, and you can see that here on this first animation. And we can also see it on the latest enhanced infrared this is the JSL version, and the different color scheme just helps us point out that I like feature a little bit better than some of the other animations. And this is just another look at the cyclone. This is called the RB Top infrared imagery. And also, more importantly, note that over the past six hours, some of the deeper and strongest cloud tops are beginning to expand more so into the southern semicircle of the storm, which is an indication that the southeasterly wind shear is continuing to abate somewhat. So this storm is going to be moving into steadily more favorable waters and upper level conditions up until the time the storm makes landfall. So there is no reason to discount the possibility of this system achieving category four cyclone status. The latest shear streamline still shows the presence of 15 to 20 knot easterly wind shear, and that is why the cyclone still has somewhat of an asymmetric appearance. But the lighter wind shear values are still just a little bit to the southeast, so once again, more strengthening is still anticipated. The latest radar mosaic of Western Australia, courtesy of the weatherchaser.com, already shows that we have some passing showers beginning to move into the Pilbara. So it is highly suggested that all interests here begin to conclude their cyclone preparations, especially as we go into the early morning hours tomorrow. That is when the weather is expected to go downhill in a hurry. Keep in mind that we could get some rather significant stormy conditions well before the eye crosses the coast. Furthermore, compared to 24 hours ago, we are beginning to see a bit of a better model consensus as to where exactly the storm is going to make landfall. The westward shift in the models is beginning to come to an end. This is the latest GFS, and this is the forecast for 3 p.m. tomorrow. It now has the eye crossing the coast directly on top of Port Hedland, Australia. But keep in mind, the previous run was a little bit west of this, and it doesn't look like Karatha is going to sustain the inner core of the storm, but you can still anticipate some rather gusty conditions, along with some potentially significant outer rain bands. But Port Hedland, you guys are still definitely not in the clear. In fact, there is still quite a good chance that the storm is going to pass very close to you, and we cannot rule out a direct hit just yet. And even if that center goes just to the east, you could also get caught up in the western half of the eye wall. Meanwhile, the European model has been very consistent all this time, with showing a landfall just to the north or north-northeast of Pardue, and that is the main model that the Bureau of Meteorology has been following and there really isn't much reason to discount this solution. But as of right now, if you take the average between the GFS and the ECMWF, it looks like the most likely pinpointed area of landfall is going to be just to the east of Port Hedland. We are still anticipating over 150 millimeters of precipitation right along the coast. Now, one good bit of news, however, is that the storm is going to continue with a rather decent rate of speed as it moves off toward the south-southeast. So we are anticipating no more than roughly 115 
to 130 millimeters further inland. And finally, we are still continuing to monitor a broad area of low pressure located just to the south-southeast of the Gulf of Carpentaria. This system would have a much greater chance of developing if it were located a bit more toward the north, but now all of the latest dynamical models are keeping the system primarily out of the Gulf, and there is a slight chance that an area of low pressure will develop along the Queensland coast within the next 72 to 96 hours but preliminary indications are that any low that does form will continue to move east-southeast, deeper out into the Coral Sea, and move away from Australia. But as always, we will continue to keep a close watch on this low-pressure system. So that is all for now from us here at 28storms.com slash cyclone. Keep it tuned here. We're going to try to make another video update shortly before the storm makes landfall tomorrow. But if interest in the Pilbara lose power before that happens, I just want to say good luck out there, and hopefully you have prepared well. If so, I'm sure you'll make it through this system just fine. Also, keep it tuned to Oz Cyclone Chasers. They are the ones that are going to be venturing out into the storm tomorrow as it's making landfall, and if they have a good enough data connection, they will be trying to stream live video of the storm as it's beginning to impact some of those local communities.